Today our travels take us to Mobile, Alabama to visit and take a self-guided tour aboard the USS Alabama, one of the mightiest battleships of World War II. But before we climb aboard, we also want to share with you some interesting details surrounding the first major leaguer and athlete to enlist in the service following the attack on Pearl Harbor and who proudly served aboard this ship during World War II. None other than Cleveland Indians pitcher and Hall of Famer Bob Feller. So keep it right here as we explore on History and Relics. Robert William Andrew Feller was born November 3, 1918, in Van Meter, Iowa, to William Andrew and Lena Feller. He was raised on an Iowa farm, where he developed his arm strength by milking cows and was taught to pitch by his father on a homemade ball field. Spotted by scout Sly Slapnika, he was signed to a contract in 1936 and joined the Cleveland Indians without even having played in the minor leagues. Feller proved he belonged right away, striking out 15 in his debut against the St. Louis Browns. Later in his rookie season, he set an American League record by striking out 17 in a game against the Philadelphia Athletics. And what did he do in that offseason after his rookie debut? Well, the 17-year-old went back home to finish high school. On April 16, 1940, Bob Feller threw the first and to date only opening day no-hitter in Major League history. And between 1939 to 1941, Feller won 24, 27, and 25 games. During this era, Washington Senators manager Bucky Harris advised his hitters who faced Feller, go up there and hit what you can see. If you can't see it, Come on back. Then on December 7, 1941, the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor happened. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt stated that it would be a day that will live in infamy. And from there, the United States entered World War II. At the point of the war starting, Feller had six full seasons and a record of 107 victories and 54 losses already under his belt. He also had a family-related draft exemption, but he knew right off that he had to answer the call of duty. On the day of the Pearl Harbor attack, Bob was on his way to sign his 1942 contract with the Indians, but he immediately called his old friend, the former world heavyweight boxing champion and World War I veteran Gene Tunney in Washington. The next day, December 8th, Tunney flew out to Chicago, which was the halfway point between Des Moines and Cleveland. Bob Feller joined the Navy and was sworn in, in Chicago, becoming the first major leaguer and athlete to enlist in World War II. Bob went into Tunney's training program of athletic routine and physical fitness in Norfolk, Virginia. After basic training, the Navy made Bob chief petty officer and assigned him as a physical training instructor. Wanting to join in the combat zone, Bob applied and went to the Naval Gunnery School in Newport, Rhode Island. After four months of added training, he was then assigned to the battleship USS Alabama, BB-60 as a gun captain on a 40 millimeter anti-aircraft mount that had a crew of 24. Bob spent 34 months on the USS Alabama. The ship spent six months escorting convoys in the North Atlantic. And then, in August 1943, 
went through the Panama Canal and headed for the Central Pacific. Over the next two years, the crew saw action in Tarawa and in the Marshalls, the Carolines, and the Philippines. They bombarded beaches to support amphibious assaults, served as escorts for aircraft carriers, and fended off kamikaze attacks. The ship's greatest moment came as a member of the task group 58.7 during June 19th and 20th, 1944, as the Japanese launched another aerial attack against the Pacific Third Fleet as it steamed in the Philippine Sea near the Marianas. The ship's SK-2 radar spotted an incoming aerial armada at 190 miles and confirmed their approaching ships at 140 miles in time to mobilize the American aircraft and ready ship defenses. In the ensuing battle, known as the Great Marianas Turkey Shoot for the lopsided Allied victory, Japan lost nearly 500 aircraft and many experienced pilots, forcing them into desperation, kamikaze suicide flights in the war's later stages. In March 1945, Feller was sent to the Great Lakes Naval Training Center and managed a baseball team there to keep soldiers' morale up. Finally, on August 6th and again on August 9th, 1945, the American B-29 bombers Enola Gay and Boxcar dropped atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which effectively brought an end to World War II. It was back to baseball after that. Bob rejoined the Indians and played the last five weeks of the 1945 season. Bob Feller would go on to play baseball for another 11 years before bringing his career to a close. And what a career it was! He was an eight-time All-Star, a World Series champion of 1948, a seven-time strikeout leader, and pitched a total of three no-hitters. He had an ERA of 3.25 with 266 wins and 2,581 strikeouts. He was inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1962. And now, let's turn our attention to the battleship USS Alabama. The Mighty A, as she came to be known, safely carried her crew throughout the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean campaigns and never suffered any casualties or significant damage due to enemy fire. During the war, the Alabama voyaged 218,000 miles, shot down 22 enemy aircraft, and earned nine battle stars for participating in significant action. Construction began February 1, 1940, at the Norfolk Navy Yard in Portsmouth, Virginia. More than 3,000 men and women, working 24 hours a day for 30 months, brought this $80 million project to completion nine months ahead of schedule. The largest ship ever built in Portsmouth, it displaces 35,000 tons. The ship carries a total of 129 guns. Its profile is dominated by three large main turrets with armor 18 inches thick each carrying three 16-inch, 45-caliber guns that could propel a 2,700-pound projectile more than 20 miles with great accuracy. In addition, the ship also bears 10 smaller side turrets that each carry two 5-inch, 38-caliber guns and 12 installations of four Bofors 40 millimeter, and originally was fitted with 52 20 millimeter cannons, which complemented the anti-aircraft battery during close encounters. When laden for action, it weighed 45,000 tons, or 90 million pounds. The ship measures 680 feet long, 108 feet and 2 inches of beam, meaning at the widest point, and rises 194 feet from keel to top light. Despite its bulky size, the Alabama's advanced design enabled it to steam at 28 knots, or almost 32 miles an hour. The vessel was christened on February 16, 1942, by Henrietta Hill, wife of Alabama Senator Lister Hill. She was commissioned on Sunday, August 16, 1942, and reported to active duty in early 1943 under Captain Fred D. Kirkland. Fully staffed, she would carry a crew of 2,500 men. She was decommissioned in 1947 and assigned to reserve duty. 
She retired in 1962. In 1964, the Alabama was taken to Mobile Bay, and on January 9, 1965, the USS Alabama Battleship Memorial Park was opened to the public. The ship was added to the National Historic Landmark Registry in 1986. And now for the part you've all been waiting for. Let's take a tour of the USS Alabama and see the sights around the park. Oh, and watch closely. You just might catch a few glimpses of Bob Feller from years past when he used to visit here quite often himself. Enjoy.
then we met up with this fine gentleman, who was also visiting the Alabama, and a Navy veteran himself, once serving on the USS Canberra, a grand ship that won seven battle stars and served from World War II to Vietnam. He also served aboard the USS Robert L. Wilson that was commissioned post-World War II and served primarily during the Vietnam era, earning three battle stars for its service. Great meeting you, sir, and thank you for your service to our great country. Navy and I was on the USS Canberra. It was the first one that I went to, went to ship, went to sea on. The USS Robert L. Wilson was the last one I was on. Okay. And, and I had, uh, I would preferred the, the Wilson more than the Canberra and the other one because it wasn't spit and polish. We had Admiral on that. Okay. And it, he didn't like it. He, when he come through the ship. You better be ready and you better be snapped up. So when he's going by, you snap up. Get busy. <laughs> but anyway, I stayed in for just about four years and I got out. To, and I, after I got out, it was uh, a little bit more easier on me than it was being in the Navy.
As we bring today's presentation to a close, we want to say that while we highlighted Bob Feller, let us not forget that Bob was one of many servicemen that served aboard this mighty ship. And we have to remember that during everyone's time here, each had a duty and a role to play. There was no favoritism. It took the efforts of all to win each battle and to protect the freedoms that we all enjoy today. To everyone that served, thank you for your service and sacrifice. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you've enjoyed our program. If you like our content, we ask that you like, share, and subscribe to our channel. It costs nothing but means a lot to us and keeps us growing. You may also leave us a tip if you choose. A link is provided here on your screen as well as in the description area below. And until next time, everyone, this one is history.